hey there, it's Hardcore Sustainable. And last year I did a video about the evacuated tube hot water system on the timber frame here right behind me. And this year uh, the timber frame needed a little bit of exterior plaster work. And when I started that job, um, I learned something interesting. I made a discovery and I just wanted to share that what I learned with you in this video. This video focuses on frozen lime putty. If you want to see a video about the entire plastering project, I'll be posting that pretty soon. So I already bought a bag of S-type lime at the building supply place uh, for using in the lime plaster. And I haven't used it yet, but I was digging around in the woods here and I found uh, this barrel, which is about two thirds full of old lime putty. And it's just like right by the corner of Jennifer's house, the timber frame that I'm working on. And I thought, hmm, all of this lime putty, I mean, you can use it as a soil amendment now, but uh, I was wondering, can you use it in plaster still? Because it's sat here through many winters. Who knows how long it's been here? Maybe like five to 10 years. It looks like cottage cheese. Basically it's, it's in curds and it's glommed together. It's definitely in a different form than it would be if you had just dumped a bunch of lime powder in here and then slaked it overnight. Now I've often seen this happen here at Dancing Rabbit where you have barrels of old lime putty that have been sitting through many winters and people have said and told me you can't use it because somehow the freezing process changes the chemical structure. Well it doesn't. It stays the same. It's just in a kind of different form and you just have to process it to make it finer. And in the past um, there's sort of archaeological evidence um, that this was often done, that a lot of the lime putty that was used um, traditionally was exposed to freezing temperatures and they can see that by the little chunks that are incorporated into old lime plaster that they find either in deposits or I guess in old buildings. It definitely was done in the past and part of the reason for that is that it's it's a really energy intensive process and ta takes a lot of effort to produce lime by burning limestone or seashells. And in, in the past, that took a lot of time and effort. And you weren't just gonna like produce a bunch of lime putty like this and then chuck it um, because it took you a long time to get it to that stage. These days, because lime is produced for using fossil fuel, it's sort of an abundant thing and we are likely, more likely to waste it um, than people in the past were. But I don't see a reason to waste it. It is really cheap. I mean, a 50 pound bag of S-type lime plaster is like less than 10 bucks at the building supply store. So it's pretty affordable. But this is probably like four bags of S-type lime. So I think I'd like to process it. Uh, I'm just gonna do it experimentally for this video and um, we'll see how it goes. I started out using this drill driver to pre-mix the putty before screening it, but I found it didn't really add anything to the process. It's possible that if I had a heavy duty drill and some kind of paddle mixer, it would help some, but this wasn't gonna do anything and I found that the mixture was still really clumpy when I went to screen it. Screening definitely goes the furthest towards returning the putty to a fine pasty state, which is what you're going for. A lot bigger chunks in here than you would no, by just looking at the putty because it looks like it's pretty fine. I mean, you can see chunks in it, but then once you get it on here, you realize there's some huge, huge clumps. The clumpier the lime is, the less of it is available to bind the sand grains in the plaster and the less of it can be exposed to CO2 so that it can complete the carbonation process necessary for the conversion back into calcium carbonate.
Alright, well, this lime is incorporated just about as good as I think I'm going to be able to get it. It does still have little flecks in it, and I think that's the smallest pieces of lime left from uh, screening it. So those are the pieces that fit through the screen. It doesn't look a whole lot different to me from uh, lime that's not from frozen lime putty. What I did was I did a little bit less sand in proportion to the lime. Normally it would be two parts sand to one part lime putty. So I'm doing a little bit more lime putty just because uh, I'm accounting for the uh, unintegrated chunks of, of lime putty that are in there. Even though they're very small, they're probably not going to do the same kind of reacting that they need to to carbonate and, uh, and solidify and cure the lime plaster the way that it should. pretty firm but it's not completely because you can still kind of bust into it like that but it's also not been even a whole week All right, well, I think this wall is definitely ready for winter. I've gotten a couple of coats of uh, lime plaster on it. And uh, looking just at the plaster, it, to me, it just doesn't look any different from any other lime plaster that I've done in the past. So I think we can pretty much determine that the frozen uh, lime putty worked just fine. It, it worked like it should and like you would expect lime plaster, uh, lime putty to work even though it had been frozen and was many, many years old. You know, looking at it closely, uh, it, it all looks white to me. I don't really see anything that stands out as a chunk. I'm sure there are chunks of lime putty in there, um, but I don't see them. And I think that if you had like a mortar mixer or a cement mixer and you uh, mix the lime, lime plaster that way, it would probably go a long way towards integrating those chunks into into the plaster. It would sort of be like uh, akin to the knocking up uh, process for for really getting the 
the lime putty bound to the sand grains. Well, so there it is, mystery solved. If you ever find yourself with a big barrel of uh, slaked lime putty that's been sitting there for five or 10 years, uh, it might still be good if it's got a layer of water over the top that's kept it uh, pretty well preserved. Because even if it goes through that freezing and thawing process, it might look a little different, but chemically it's pretty much the same and it does a fine job of making a nice lime plaster. Lately I've been doing these videos and I kind of feel like I, I put them out there. I don't feel like I connect with you all out there very much and I don't know why that is. I think there are some platforms for channels that just sort of lend themselves to connecting more one-on-one -on -one with the viewers but um, this is more like a me showing you what's going on rather than interacting with you as much. I would like to do that more and I'm looking into the possibility of doing some video streaming and then you can uh, leave comments in the chat, ask, ask questions. That might be something that I could do over the winter time when I don't have as much ability to make some of these videos, especially going into the winter with, uh, with the virus and the pandemic being so bad. Uh, might be a great way to connect with you all. So I'm going to look into that and see if it's possible. I can definitely do it from my house, but if I'm moving around outside, I don't really have any cell phone service and data and all that, but I'm gonna look into it. I really like uh, connecting with people through the comments and uh, I think having live comments and people being able to ask me questions or whatever they want, that'll be a great way that I can connect with you all. Don't forget to follow Hardcore Sustainable on Instagram, on Facebook, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet, and we'll see you next time.